Oh my god, there is too much reflection. I, I, I'll just remove it anyway. Hello guys, Zander here and welcome back to a new video in which we are going to talk about this Ryzen Tosh or Hacking Tosh which I did on my pre-built PC. In this video, we will be talking about all the components, uh, how I did it, issues that I faced, issues that you may face, all the questions that you guys asked me when I told you guys that I'm building a Ryzen Tosh PC basically. Everything like that will be answered in this video. This is not an installation guide video. I have already made a detailed, like literally very detailed one hour guide, which will be linked in the i button over here. Watch that guide if you are interested in building your own Ryzen Tosh or Hacking Tosh basically. I think there are going to be three major big questions. First one is going to be which are the parts that you use, basically I used for this PC and can I use this part, that part. First of all, let's talk about the PC that I used for building this Ryzen Tosh. So I use the pre-built PC, which I bought from bitcard.in for around 1 lakh rupees. You can do that as well. I have already made a dedicated detailed video on this PC and how it performs in Windows and gaming, which will be linked in the i button over here. It's a great gaming PC for the price tag of 1 lakh rupees. But when it comes to Hackintosh, it totally supports it out of the box. And I especially talked with bitcard guys and they made sure that the listing that they have or all the parts that they have are same as the parts that I've used in this video. So if you have a budget of 1 lakh rupees and if you are interested in a gaming PC or if you are interested in a Ryzen Tosh then this is a PC which you should definitely check out the link will be present in the description box below now let's talk about the second question and that's going to be is dual boot possible can I dual boot into Hackintosh or Ryzen uh, Macintosh basically or hack uh, what should I let's go with Hackintosh and Windows 10 then yes, that's definitely possible. I am doing that right now. Ryzen Tosh, this is this was my side project. Windows, like I can't switch from Windows to Mac OS as of now, even for Final Cut Pro. But when it comes to dual booting, that's definitely possible. And I had literally zero issues with dual booting the systems. It's very easy. I've talked about how to do that and how I did that in the guide, which will be linked in the I button over here once again. Now let's talk about the second question. Is this possible with Nvidia GPUs and can I do it on my laptop? You can definitely follow the guide in the I button over there and you can get it working on your laptop, but I would definitely recommend you to Google search once with your laptop model. I do not have that much of experience with laptops. I mean, no experience at all. But when it comes to PCs, I can definitely tell you one thing that it will not work with Nvidia GPUs, like latest Nvidia GPUs. And when it comes to the PC that I have, I have Ryzen 3700X, Gigabytes X570 Aorus Elite motherboard and Gigabytes uh, 5700XT graphics card. And when it comes to graphics card, AMD's graphics cards are must. You have to use 5700, 5700XT, 5600XT or older GPUs basically like RX series graphics card will support Ryzen Tosh or Hacking Tosh as well. And uh, one of the best things I feel like about the Ryzen Tosh PCs is that they are beast when it comes to performance in Windows. And they are literally beast when it comes to performance in Hackintosh as well. I'm extremely happy to report that this system is very stable. Now let's talk about all the things that are working first and then we'll talk about all the things which are not working with this PC. First one is going to be Apple services. So if you're wondering whether iMessage is or FaceTime will work or not, then there you go. iMessage is working out of the box. I sent my message, hey, and he replied after one day, hey, hi. And that's the only friend that I have uh, who uses iMessage. I mean, there are a few others, but I don't talk to them much. I mean, friends issues. Let's not go there. iMessage works. FaceTime also works. But the issue is that uh, my Logitech C920 is not detected on this Hackintosh. And I did not try much to get it working. You may probably get it working with some tweaking around. But FaceTime does open up and it will work if you try. But uh, as there is no camera connected, I did not try using it. When it comes to App Store, I mean, obviously it works. I installed all these applications from App Store itself. If I want to install Adobe Lightroom, then I can simply press get and install. And as this is Mac, it will ask me to give my password. I mean, there is a lot of security. So basically all the major Apple services are working out of the box. One thing which is not working, which we'll talk about in the later part of the video. Now let's talk about my favorite part about Hackintosh is Spotlight. Spotlight is something similar to start, but it is 100 times powerful than start. Microsoft needs to work on something similar to Spotlight. Start button is, it's useless basically. So Spotlight works and uh, command button on your Mac will turn into uh, Windows button on your Windows uh, keyboard basically. Now in Spotlight, you can simply search for Final Cut Pro and you can open it up. Final Cut Pro was already opened up. And let's talk about the most interesting part. 
I am pretty much sure that many of you are wondering, should I go and build a Hackintosh PC for Final Cut Pro? Then I am extremely happy to report once again that Final Cut Pro works super fine out of the box on this PC, Hackintosh, with the specifications that I have. So for the price of 1 lakh rupees, I am sure that you are getting performance uh, like let's say 2 lakh or 2 lakh 50 thousand rupees iMac Pro. And that's a fantastic thing. Final Cut Pro was very stable when it comes to editing, uh, rendering in the background, rendering the video out, uh, editing flow, workflow. Basically. As you can see, there are no frame drops, literally nothing. Performance with Final Cut Pro was mind blowing in my opinion. If you are thinking, will it lag? Will it cause boot loops? Will it crash? Anything like that? No, that did not happen with me. It will be as stable as any other MacBook Pro or Mac Pro if it crashes for you and it crashes like for a lot of people who are using official systems as well. But on this Hackintosh or Ryzen Tosh, Final Cut Pro was super fine. I had no issues using it. Another thing that I want to talk about is updating the system because when I installed the Ryzen Tosh on this uh, PC, PC, okay. There was an update software update basically 15.1.2 to 15.1.3 or something similar to that. And I installed the update and had no issues even after installing the update. So I will highly recommend you to not do that. I mean, do not update the system unless until it's required uh, before updating, make sure that other people are not facing any type of issues. Otherwise you will end up updating it and you will start facing a lot of issues. Most probably you will not, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. When it comes to Cinebench, I got a score of 4792, which is as good as Windows score. And this, once again, like if you are interested in benchmarks, this proves that when it comes to uh, performance, this is going to be a beast of a Hackintosh basically. Now let's talk about all the things which are not working with this PC. And first one is going to be AirDrop. That's not working because I did not buy an adapter and get it working, but you can definitely get this one working very easily. Just get a supported adapter, which will be listed on the open course website. I have already talked about that in the uh, installation guide, which is in the I button over there and you can get it working definitely, but I do not have it working out of the box. And even if you use a Wi-Fi motherboard, you will not be able to use Wi-Fi just because your motherboard supports it. That's not going to work at least as of shooting this video. One big thing that's not working is sleep with Catalina. If you if your PC goes to sleep, then it sleeps forever. It, it can't boot up. You will have to do a force reboot. The fix was easy. I set my PC to never sleep just by going into settings. And this is quite basic in my opinion. You can do that very easily. Now we got a score of 4,880. I mean, a little bit more than last time. Anyway, that's good. Another issue that I had was reading NTFS drives. As I'm dual booting right now, Windows has uh, drives which are formatted as NTFS. Whereas on Mac OS, you cannot write on those NTFS drives. You have to use either XFAT or you have to use a solution called as Paragon. Uh, I mean, this is a software Paragon NTFS, uh, which will allow you to write to that hard drive as well. But in order to get it working on non Seagate drives, yeah, is that you will have to pay for it. I mean, if you're planning to use this as your primary Hackintosh machine or to use Final Cut Pro basically format all your hard drives to XFAT and that will be readable in Windows as well as Hackintosh or Mac OS basically and uh, you will be good to go. Netflix unfortunately does not go above 720p. It gets stuck at 720p all the time. But the solution is there once again, use Safari and uh, it will go to 1080p very easily. So use Safari for Netflix if you are interested in watching it in 1080p resolution only. And I guess that's pretty much it for this Hackintosh video. I talked about all the things that are working, not working. Once again, I'll answer the most important question. Is it stable enough? Definitely you can use this machine as your daily driver. Make sure you get or you follow the guide properly because getting proper working EFI is most important in getting a stable Hackintosh build. Follow the guide if you want to make a stable system. If you don't follow the guide properly, you will not get a properly working system. Take one entire day or at least seven to eight hours to make sure that you can follow the guide completely and go through the guide and everything like that. And then you will have a very stable system. Uh, I think if I was to use uh, Final Cut Pro, then definitely I would any day prefer to buy a PC like this for one lakh rupees rather than spending 2 lakh 50 thousand or 3 lakh rupees on an iMac Pro. Definitely not recommended. This is thumbs up.
And that's it. If you still have any more doubt sessions or queries regarding this video, which I did not answer in this video, do let me know about that in the comment section box below. I'll be more than glad to answer those questions. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because many more awesome videos like these are going to come real soon on the channel. If you have any requests when it comes to Hackintosh PCs or anything, do let me know about that as well. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for watching.